Hello all, it's Ellie and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I cover crime cases and do other weird creepy things on this channel so if you enjoy that, subscribe, uh, turn on post notifications and like this video. For today's case I will be covering the murder and torture of Kellyanne Bates. What happened to this young girl is probably the most evil things I've spoke about in cases so far. Like this girl really went through hell. And uh, so just a disclaimer, I do not mean to offend anyone that's affected by this case or involved in this case. I just enjoy crime cases and like to cover them. Like I said, this case will be the murder and torture of Kellyanne Bates. She's a 17 year old who will actually go down in like Britain's darkest crime history with the events that actually led up to her murder. Kellyanne Bates was born on the 18th of May 1979 in Hattersley, Manchester. Her parents were Margaret and Tommy Bates who were so thrilled when she was born. She was known as a very loving child and uh, she was full of energy and she was really independent as well that the par like her parents really gave her a lot of credit for. She had a really nice, really strong relationship with her parents but just like almost all teenagers, as you grow up you slip away from your parents a bit and this happened to Kelly around the age of 14. When Kelly was 14 she decided to get a job, show her independence and how she was growing up in the world. So she decided to just get a job of babysitting because obviously being 14, trying to get a job is it's not the easiest thing and uh, she started babysitting for like friends families and one night she was introduced to a man called Dave Smith. He was a friend of one of the parents that she was babysitting and uh, he thought that it would be a good idea to keep her safe to walk her home. This is where between the two of them the grooming process would begin. Her parents heard about this Dave and knew that her their daughter was seeing this boy called Dave. They thought he was just a boy from school because they hadn't actually ever met him due to how happy Kelly still was over the relationship she would say good things that her parents thought that okay just a nice boy from school who's making her happy right now all is well there's no reason to be alarmed but Kelly started to become quite reserved she was keeping some secrets she would also sneak out at night and uh, sometimes wouldn't return for days this did start to ring alarm bells in Tommy and Margaret because this wasn't the Kelly they knew. Dave would call Margaret with his concern on Kelly's whereabouts because as her boyfriend, he he cared for her. So uh, they thought he's a genuine, like, nice guy who cares for her daughter, isn't concerned, like, for her safety. Now, after two years of Kelly and Dave dating, um, Dave would finally meet Kelly's parents and um, all positive views of him and all great vibes that he was giving them would go straight out the window when they first met. When Tommy and Margaret met Dave, uh, they, no they now know why Kelly was keeping so many secrets about the relationship. This is because the school friend boy that her parents thought Dave was, a, actually a 32 year old man called Dave Smith. Margaret actually recalls the first time she met Dave and she said that the hairs on her body instantly stood up and she sensed a dark evil behind his wicked eyes but she decided to give her mature, sensible daughter benefit of the doubt and let her make her own decisions with her relationship. Kelly and Dave continued this on again, off again relationship for several months, but when Kelly started to come home with bruises and bite marks over her body, Margaret and Tommy were like trying to put their foot down and not let their daughter go through any more abuse. But Kelly, who was now 17, they were hoping that she would end the relationship. As the relationship continued, Kelly's parents started to like live in fear. They were just so scared of what was happening to their daughter and they hoped that Kelly would be able to see the like abuse on like a, in a bigger picture and know that she shouldn't be going through this but sadly she was caught under a spell. Then one day Kelly came home and kind of just like said to her parents how she has a new job so uh, she won't be seeing them much due to the timetable of it. And then um, on the 30th of November 1995, Kelly actually moved in with Dave and this would be like a fatal mistake because Kelly would never be seen alive again. Now Kelly is completely like restricted back from seeing any friends or family. The only way they actually knew she was okay was by receiving like anniversary cards or birthday cards that they thought was from Kelly but it turns out they were actually from Dave 
and uh, he would write them out to keep the families at ease so she he so he could fully isolate Kelly and um, make sure that him and Kelly were left alone and the family just were not involved. Kelly's family were actually hesitant to get involved because they didn't like they didn't want to kind of overstep the mark, get involved, go and see Kelly and just draw a big wedge between the like the whole of the relationship, which was a small relationship that they had at this point. But um, this ended up being a decision that they would regret for the rest of their lives. Now on April the 17th, 1996, Dave Smith walked into a police station and had said that he'd accidentally killed his girlfriend while they had an argument in the bathroom and despite his efforts to try and save her, she was now dead. This guy has just came into the police station, he said he's accidentally killed his girlfriend. Obviously, police officers take action and they go straight to the apartment where um, they found Kelly's lifeless naked body laying on the floor of the bedroom. Now, as soon as the police saw her body, they knew straight away this wasn't like just a, an instant death. They knew it wasn't an accident, but nobody knew the extent of what actually happened happened. An investigation showed that Kelly's blood was in every single room of the house, that her autopsy also showed that there were 150 separate injuries on her body. Her body showed that it wasn't a, a sudden outburst of rage and he just lost it like 10 minutes ago and then killed her. It was that this was a torture over time. They managed to calculate that with four weeks before her death, what this poor girl went through. When researching this case, it just hit differently because this is pure, like, pure evil. And I actually have a list of all the injuries, well, listed injuries that were done to her. So I'm just gonna read them off like a list and a big warning because it gets really bad. In the four weeks leading up to her death, Kelly had been burned with cigarettes, she had been burnt on her thigh from a hot iron, boiling water had been poured over her feet and her bum, she had multiple stab wounds caused by knives, forks and scissors, they even found stab wounds from inside her mouth, she had ligature marks around her neck indicating that she had been strangled, she had also been tied up to a radiator by her hair. Her hands and kneecaps had been crushed, making her unable to walk or escape. She had been partially scalped. Her nose, ears, mouth, lips, and genitalia had been mutilated. Both of her, both of her eyes had been gouged out and he stabbed the empty eye socket holes. Like, uh, yeah. It's determined that Kelly had been blind for like three weeks before her actual murder. She had also been starved for ages and um, she hadn't had any water for several days. This is all before she died. And while they were having their argument in the bathroom, he also beat her with the shower head. And then obviously she was drowned and that is what sadly killed her. Sadly, it was Tommy Bates who would have to go and identify his daughter's body. Her mother said that people called him an animal, but an animal wouldn't do this to another animal. He is a very evil man. I think about how much pain she must have been in and how she must have thought that we didn't love her because we didn't save her. Obviously, with his confession, this case went to trial and everyone would actually learn that Dave Smith was actually James Patterson Smith, who was 45 when he first start, met and started to date Kelly not the like 32 year old everyone thought well most thought he was and um he was a man of abusive relationships and uh, had gone through multiple divorces so yeah this evil man james his first marriage ended in 1980 after 10 years of beating his wife and between 1980 and 1982 james got with a 20 year old tina watson who was treated as as his own punching bag and uh, she was beat all the time and was even beaten while while she was pregnant with James's child and uh, he also attempted to drown her in the bath. James then got with a 15 year old Wendy Motter's head and he would beat her and also tried to drown her in the kitchen sink. In a twisted turn of events, uh, James actually tried to convince the jury that he was the real victim here and uh, Kelly was the one who would put James through hell and was always winding James up. Uh, this was a, an attempt to excuse his violent actions. He also told the jury that the reason he would lash out 
was because Kelly would taunt him about his dead mum. He claims that she would challenge him to hurt her and uh, he was just complying with her wishes. Come on. From where the jury had to see all the pictures, all the evidence of what this evil human done to poor Kelly, that all of them accept, like all of them accepted professional counselling afterwards, due to everything they had to see, witness, hear. This it's so. I just yeah. Okay, the jury was built up of seven men and five women and it just took one hour for them to find James Patterson Smith guilty and he was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 20 years served. Once this had been decided, the judge actually turned to James and said, you are an abuser of women and I intend, so far as it's in my power, you will abuse no more. So with any luck in this world, and I'm sure we'll beg that James will spend the rest of his life in prison for the horrible acts he has done. You know, he completely deserves it. This pretty much wraps up this case. Um, I feel so sorry for a family not knowing what to do. I'm sure they blame themselves for not checking up on their daughter, but they cannot be blamed. The only person to blame here is James Patterson Smith because he is an evil form of human. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Turn on the bell for all my other videos I post. If you have any more video suggestions of cases you'd like me to look into, feel free to comment them down below. Follow me on Instagram, and I will see you in my next video. Until then, remember to stay home, stay safe. Bye.